Hello everyone and welcome back to Next Space Rebels where I need to optimize this rocket. Uh, we need to somehow eke out about 2000 meters per second more. It's a little bit hard because numbers don't make a huge amount of sense like when especially when it comes to the efficiency numbers on the engines because this is the efficiency number here and it's 6000 this one's 3,000. The one we have in our upper stage is 2,200. This is not normally how rocket engines work. Uh, so it's a little bit hard. I mean, obviously I can see why people made SSTOs when this cluster engine has this much more efficiency than anything else. Uh, of course it has a huge amount of mass, but that definitely does not make up for the fact that it has so much efficiency. But we'll make do. My question is, what benefit would uh, this increase of efficiency f uh, with the large bell engine have if we take out the compact engine, which we can. So I'm going to take this out and see if we can fit this first. Oop. It's a little bit tight. We could probably shift things down. But will 3000 give us a whole lot more? Or will the fact that it's heavier basically negate that? That is our question. We can just about fit this might not be in line with the center of mass though. We might have to flip it. I think we have to flip it. Okay, so quick test. Let's see what this... Uh, we, we'll basically be testing what if we replace one thing at a time. Ooh, might be tight to feed this pipe. Come on, there's, there's enough space. Can you get there? What if I just... No. Oh, come on. There we go. All right. Yeah. We'll just try one thing at a time and see what works. So we'll see if this gets us any further. I, another option is, of course, to add more fuel to this stage, which will require another turbo pump. But let's do this. And also, we might investigate different nose cone arrangements since the nose cone is 11 kilograms. And then there's the third stage option. But Okay. Well, launch. It's a heavier upper stage engine this time. Why don't I use the auto gimbal? Because I don't trust it, by the way. Somebody had wondered about that. And let's face it, I didn't play Kerbal for all this time for nothing. I think we've got a fairly good approach here. We're still technically going up faster than real life rockets generally do. Uh, we hit a higher altitude in one minute. Uh oh. Because I'm using up down, it's weird though. I have to get used to that every time I start again. We certainly don't seem to get the same horizontal speed we did before. That's interesting. Okay, second stage. Uh, remember, uh, this is left right now. follow I guess uh, the angles weird oh it ripped apart that's weird I mean we've got no atmosphere hmm oh and but this is the lower stage that we're focused on now but yeah the large bell engine I guess ripped apart hmm well that won't be any good will it I'm just checking what our apoapsis actually was. I think it was okay, so... I mean, anything... The one thing we don't want to do is exceed 160 kilometers. That's one thing we don't want to do with the first stage. So, okay. Well, that's uh, annoying. Oh, we got a record looping. 29 loops. Okay, I guess we'll upload it <laughs> for the loops. Corkscrew, 10 or more loopings. I don't think this needs any more tags. Shoot. I don't know if we want to pursue this any further. Uh, I don't know exactly how to re- I mean, we could get something else instead of a bike wheel, but I really like the bike wheels. Because, well, let's just quickly take a look and see if there's any part that 
can stand in for a bike wheel and still have more structural integrity. 27 and it's 2.8 kilograms. So we're looking for something with less mass per surface area. That obviously not, but is stronger. These are really strong. They're just not very big. I mean, I can actually see how that could help. Now, what's its complexity though? Five? I mean, if we can replace all this pipage... Hmm... It's just not quite the right turn, you see. The thing is, uh, well, let's see... Um, well, that could sort of work if we flip it and rotate it. Could kinda... No, I mean, still not the best in order to slip by. We need to run the pipe like that, right? That's really heavy now. But... And that's now poking out aerodynamically. So, I mean, they're just... they just happen to not be very good. <laughs> Uh, they're all just barely not great. These old tiny nose cones had zero drag on them. If we could use fins at the top instead of these two, that might be a marginal benefit. I don't think it'll affect our aerodynamics that much, but we should check. So there's no new drag marker. There's a little bit of drag on this side here. Move that out. Center lift on this stage is still fine. There's no undo, so if I take this off... It, it won't update the markers on here, you see, so I can't do that. I'll give the large bell engine one more try. I wish I knew exactly which part broke apart. It's probably this wheel. Either this wheel or that wheel. Probably this wheel though. Alright, let's, let's just give it one more go. Oh, let's make sure things are connected. I mean, if the wheels can deal with the stress in the atmosphere through dynamic pressure, there's just no excuse, really. Oh, we lost... I think we lost a fin there. We definitely lost a piece. Something fell off. I should check the structural integrity of those tiny little fins. Basically been keeping prograde here. Let me get the vertical speed data up. Yeah, I haven't had to touch it this time. But I think I will need to maintain some positive angle here. Well, it's sort of doing the right thing. Okay. Stage 2. I'll try and be gentle. Okay. Interesting plume. For those plume critics out there. Okay, 3.3 kilometers per second now. I think we can mostly flatten out. I think we'll reach 160 right now. Yeah. Probably overdoing it a bit. Oh! Uh, uh oh, no, I think that was just the camera flip. I think that it was just a camera flip. Looking at the angle there. Gosh, that messed me up a bit. But 
as far as we got more height, so it's a little bit complicated. But as far as our horizontal horizontal speed, I think we end up in the same place. So the extra mass of the engine sort of counteracts the additional efficiency. We got maybe a little bit more because we we did hit a higher height here, but not by that much. I don't think it makes up for the fact that we are a little bit slower. So, okay, that is the verdict with uh, this engine as far as I'm concerned. I don't think it's a good replacement for the compact engine. But our structural integri integrity is sure tenuous. We managed to make it this time without reinforcing anything the last time we broke up. Okay, 210 kilometers was our apoapsis, so finish. Done it, I'll upload it anyway. Collage, custom, fine, I'll, I'll throw in rocket kick, rocket kit XL. I should get points for bringing that to space. Tiny amount of followers. Okay, let's continue. So. Make sure to select a challenge, though. My conclusion is we can just go back to the compact engine. These fins, I think, dropped off. They have 10 strength, so... This has good strength and isn't too heavy. And it doesn't have the drag coefficiency of that one. Hmm. Maybe, maybe just putting the. How bad will our aerodynamics be if we just put these on top anyway? Maybe we need a third stage. I could fit a third stage in between, and you know, you could sort of imagine. This doesn't have any drag thing, right? Yeah. So I mean, if if. Well, we want to block that end and that end, so we've got a little bit of a gap here, but let's just test this out. Let's just have three, but ultimately if we want a third stage, we can replace the center one. Weird having a blunt end object like this, but they really don't have any drag coefficients, so why not? Uh, well, the why not... Uh, oh, our center of lift has gone awry. Um, so that is the why not. One thing we can do is move these down, move that a little bit. Oh, the asymmetry. Well, anyway, we're here to try things out. Let's see what happens. Oh, connections. Okie dokie, launch. Back to the compact engine. But now, with less mass at the top, might need to f dial down the gimbling there. Uh, it's okay now. Okay, uh, it's, that's okay. I mean, it's not perfect, but I'll take it for now. As far as trajectory. Okay, we've definitely got more horizontal speed from the first stage this time. Not as much vertical speed, so let's try and pitch up a little bit more here. Okay, second stage. Now, technically, when it says out to 160 kilometers, it's not necessarily checking that that's all the way around. <laughs> so, we only need to get our apoapsis above 160 kilometers, I think. One end might still be lower. If our apoapsis is high enough. Of course, if you get uh, 7.8 kilometers per second, that's all just down to the trajectory. But it does save us a little bit of a circularization headache. But certainly if we give our more efficient stage to first stage more fuel, that would probably be better. I mean, this seems like a marginal benefit. We'll get to 160 kilometers. We're still short about 2 kilometers per second. It's just a little bit better than our best attempt. Before adding fuel to the first stage, I want to see what potentially just 
tossing in an upper stage, a solid upper stage, just for simplicity's sake, uh, because we don't want to beat out a complexity limit. Uh, we want to see what that will do for us. So anyway, I'll finish this. Uncommon tags, eh, I'll pass on it. Okay, so we've got 56 complexity to work with. So what I'm looking at is we're gonna try and keep it simple. We gotta have a decoupler. We're going to have the most efficient booster that we've got, which they're all pretty bad. But it's either a double booster or the big booster. Big booster is still pretty small compared to all this, so... Um, but it's complex, so... Just one of them. And it's purely like that. Very, very pure. <laughs> okay, and then of course this has to be triggered specifically. They only have a time trigger for these. I'm going to stop the recording, review the recording, see what time we hit our apoapsis, and go with that. Uh, not when we hit our apoapsis, when we uh, lose thrust, because otherwise after that we don't have any control. Okay, it looks like four minutes will be fine. So, 240 seconds. Let's see. Let's see if that works out for us. That'll be a few seconds after the second stage cutout. Okay, launch. Okay, up it goes. We are definitely past the speed of sound. And we should be through maximum dynamic pressure. I mean, thrust weight ratio wise, this is still much higher than a regular rocket. I mean, we're close to getting to orbit in four minutes. That's pretty fast by regular standards. Got more vertical speed this time. Okay, second stage. Hopefully that means that I don't have to keep the pitch angle up. Well, one way or another, that thing at the top is going after four minutes, so... I don't even know if it needed the fins at the bottom, but maybe not. But it needed some structure to connect to the decoupler, though. And again, I know that the single stage system will work easier. That's not that's not the issue. <laughs> I, I understand. I I understand drop tanks, and uh, effectively, it's a one and a half stage system that would be optimal given the efficiency of the big engine that we have. Basically, we drop some fuel tanks, as they've been leading us into for a while now. I have no idea what the net benefit of the oxidizer is, considering how heavy the oxidizer tanks are. So, that's sort of a question mark, whether it's worthwhile to pack any of that at all. That's a weird thing, the way they did that. Well, we're past 5 kilometers per second. The big booster can hardly do nothing, hopefully. <laughs> Let's see what happens. One. Uh, it's past time, isn't it? Oh, it didn't. I have to trigger. <laughs> I didn't tell the decoupler to trigger. Oh, man. I'm so sad. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do that again. Right. This should uh, trigger, let's say, one second before, just in case we lose some thrust otherwise. You know, this uh, Kit Nose XL is probably better than this low drag nose cone. Alright, once more. Once more with feeling. I thought we ended up a little bit too high last time. 
Okay, we should be through Max Q again. Alright, second stage. Yeah, this time I overcompensated and we're a little bit low. One thing we absolutely want to do is be pointed pro-grade by the time this runs out. Pro-grade, for those who don't know, is just the forward velocity vector arrow on the angle there. The big fat arrow is where we're pointed. The thin arrow is where our velocity is going. Okay, well... Five seconds. And go! It is off. It got to 6.2 kilometers per second, so that's not good enough. That, that was just like 400 meters per second. Is that the best way to go to use our complexity, or should we add more fuel to the first stage? Anyway, record speed. I don't know why it says 3.11 kilometers per second. That worries me, because, like, we definitely went faster than that. <laughs> we definitely went faster than that, because we zeroed out the vertical speed. I know that our absolute vector was bigger than that. So, why does it not read the right top speed anyway? Is the world rotating in a really weird way? Halo-shaped part on top of the rocket. Really? Take it if you give it to me. You're not gonna kick me off of this platform. Only 120 followers. Jeez, they're really bored with these things. So, let's see. We don't have a whole lot of extra complexity, but then again, the big booster is pretty darn complex. 41. So what we're looking at is, we'll need a gate as well, because otherwise it won't work. And that fuel bottle is really, well, that's really fat though. Well, we can get a twin jet, but that requires oxidizer. The techno jet also requires oxidizer. We only have 28 complexity left and we can't use the junk jet. Um, let me just get rid of this and see really want to use the junk jet because of the efficiency. If we're going to have an upper stage at all. What's the dry mass of the junk jet? Junk engine. 30 kilograms, so it's pretty heavy. Scrap engine does have the benefit of being light, but its efficiency is worse than the efficiency of the solid motors. Well, at least the big booster. See, that's 400. Hmm. I mean, it can last longer because it's attached to a, another fuel tank, but then the fuel tank is an additional mass. So, we definitely don't want to use a scrap engine. These jets would take an oxidizer tank, and that's as small as they get. Yeah. This is the smallest oxidizer tank that we have. So, essentially, they're not doable. So it has to be the junk engine if we want a third stage, basically. But it's really heavy at 30 kilograms. So I'm thinking third stage is not the way to go. So we are left with the idea of adding more fuel to our first stage. The problem with that is we can really only add one fuel tank and that'll hit our complexity limit and it's awkward to try and fit it. Another option is to have two of these. We can get two of these with our complexity limit, but then connecting them up might require a little bit more effort. But at least they can fit easily. We could stage off tanks. That That is an option I am aware of. I think we might need some extra nose cones to cover this side of the, these. Okay, so we've got those two booster tanks, and I'll add some nose cones and we'll see what happens. This is all just experimentation. That's sort of a floating part, but it doesn't say so, so we're alright. Yeah, I'm actually amazed that we still have 20 complexity there. Can we get 
like two of the big fuel tanks, then we can have just an extension of this. That's they're only 31. These are 23. If we can get two of these, why can't we get two of those? Oh, I, is the complexity was reduced because I took out the pumps. That's why. I wonder if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Let's find out. I took out the two small pumps. I don't know. And that's because we get extra feed from these two tanks. But when they run out, I don't know whether we're going to be able to keep going at that point or not, or whether we're going to lose too much thrust. So we'll see. Okay, so that's why we're saving some. Uh, this pop pump, which we could use, is only 16, so that's not too bad. But uh, that might be just enough to prevent us from using two of these tanks. All right, well, let's see what this version does. Well, that's vigorous at the start because, again, we've got those nice spherical tanks. Oh, I should have turned more vigorously. Yeah, it doesn't look like we needed those pumps at all as long as we have those nice booster tanks. Okay, second stage. Up, 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 up. Yeah, I don't even know how using the swivels on fins works when you're, there's no atmosphere, so. Yeah, that, that whole idea didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but. At least I'm trying to do it legitimately over here. We should get to the right height. So actually, we didn't overshoot that much. But I did have to do some pitch down from the prograde vector in order to make that happen. And we'll get some benefit, but we're not going to make orbit here. Better than with the big booster, though. And by that, I mean the third stage with that SRB. And 6.8, so we just need one kilometer per second now. Pretty good. And maybe just adding, well, yeah, it's going to be interesting adding those big fuel tanks to the first stage. Very spacey and everything. I mean, except for the look of it. I mean, we, we're certainly in space. I wonder what happened to the nose cones I had on top there. Hold on a sec. Did I remove those for some reason? Oh, we got an epic tag. Record speed again. Marathon for some reason. Three leaf clover. Three, using three round parts in a three leaf clover shape. Oh, I guess because there's the bike wheel and the two spherical things. I'm surprised I can tell that. Well, we got a lot of follows for that one. They like the marathon thing, apparently. No, we do have nose cones. I think they must have fallen off at some point. Um, these only have 10 structural integrity. Uh, so that's not good. We want to make sure that we remain aerodynamically covered here. I wonder if they fell off of the big booster too. Oh, well, looks like we'll have to have those there. Maybe we'll have additional fin parts instead of the nose cones here. Since they make better nose cones than the actual nose cones. I just want to see if the uh, improved aerodynamics helps, so we'll try one more time. Next time we'll try with the extended one with additional truck fuel tanks. But uh, we'll try once again with this. And I want to turn a little bit more vigorously initially. We're over one ton, by the way. Okay. And go. Oh, still not as vigorous as I needed to. Hold on, let's redo that. I might need to start even before we can switch camera.
Okay, I've started a little bit of a turn. That's a little bit better. All right. Again, we don't want to go too far away from that prograde vector because that not only adds stress, but also in inefficiency. But still, I could probably have turned faster. Okay, so hopefully we get more horizontal speed out of this this time. Maybe we can get to 7 kilometers per second. Okay, staging. We are in space. I think we're too shallow though. It's weird with the tanks on the first stage given that they the booster ones sort of cut out at a certain time. Okay. Last little bit here. And Ah, just short of 7 kilometers per second. Okay, and probably a little bit too low. We didn't quite hit 160 kilometers this time. But, yep, getting closer here. So, maybe next time I'll have this nailed, we'll see. But, uh, for now, we'll just follow this down. Let's see what happens. This crazy contraption here. Oh! It just disappeared on me. No. Oh. It didn't even reach Apoapsis, did it? It just disappeared. And now it seems it's apparently coming down, but just lying about. It. I guess we can't. I guess the logic is we can't track it past a certain distance. Maybe. Maybe that's it. We lose. Uh, there's a horizon issue, and we lose comms with it. I'll, I'll take that, if that's the logic. Alright, uh, we didn't loop very much. Uh, we got a record speed. We got a viral tag. Comment line. Well, again. <laughs> uh, Alright, truck. Of course we use the truck fuel tank. We always use the truck fuel tank. Okay. So, this has been an episode without any of the communication nonsense. The, 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 the chat that we have with all those peoples. So, unconventional. Oh, we got 2,000 follows with that. Uh, so, that's a little bit unconventional. But, yeah. We were just focused on trying to make orbit. We've gotten closer. And next time, uh, we will we will do it better. And we'll see how... Maybe... I think the next logical thing would be to try and fit those truck fuel tanks. But I can't guarantee that we can do a good enough job with that. And stay under the complexity limit. Uh, it might be that taking that one extra challenge, this advertisement stunt, might help, but that sure seems like we're gonna burn down a forest. <laughs> uh, anyway, four extra complexity there. So if it turns out we need four extra complexity, we'll do that one quickly. But I don't know for sure exactly how much we need. We'll see. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.